Hello there and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I've got something to show you that I think is super cool and a great tool to be aware of if you're someone like me, that is, someone who likes to build things. As some of you might know, I built my own LED filming light system that I use in all of my videos these days. This system has been absolutely awesome for the kind of filming that I do, but it's got one major flaw, the adapters between the lights and the stands that hold them. The adapters that I'm currently using are 3D printed out of PLA plastic, and they clamp directly onto the aluminum PCBs where all the LED chips are mounted. Those of us who have 3D printed before might see where the issue here could arise. These lights, though relatively effectively cooled, still get hot. PLA is a plastic that softens at a very low temperature compared to a lot of other plastics such as ABS or nylon. So the issue that I've been having here is that these lights get hot enough to melt and deform their mounting adapters that are used to attach them to the stands. This is a pretty big problem as the lights droop over time and could have even fallen off the stands entirely, though I was able to make sure that that didn't happen with my lights because I caught it early enough. With that out of the way, it's clear that I'm going to need a new material for these mounts. I could have gone out and bought some ABS or nylon filaments, though I've heard that both of those filaments can be challenging to print on good days with nice 3D printers, so my mostly stock Ender 3s might have had some serious issues with that. Plus, getting strong threads in plastic is a challenge, and using a brass insert would have made the slim profile of my light mounts impossible. Plus, it's another thing I'd have to buy, as I don't have any on hand. My scenario is unlikely to be the kind of scenario that many of you might have, but the solution I came up with is still one that can apply to a lot of different situations. So without further ado, let's talk about what I use to solve this problem that I think is so cool. Thanks to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay, I was able to order some high quality 3D printing services for a custom model that I created. However, the special part here is that this isn't any regular 3D printing service. No, these parts are 3D printed out of aluminum. PCBWay offers many great manufacturers manufacturing services, and though I usually use their PCB service, which I love, I've gone ahead and tried out their metal 3D printing services with these new mounts. I'll go ahead and install the rest of these mounts in a bit, but first I'd like to talk about some of the engineering and design thought that went into these mounts, as well as some considerations that you might need to think about when designing parts that you want to have 3D printed out of metal. I went ahead and started out these mounts very similarly to how I modeled the original plastic ones. However, there are going to be a few things that need to be changed due to the different material that I'll I'll get into in a second. With the exact same footprint set, I made sure to sketch out a hole that was 5.16 millimeters in diameter. This hole will soon have standard quarter inch 20 threads tapped into it so that it can mount to any standard tripod mount. I could have probably tried to have the threads directly printed in the model, considering that the SLM process that is used is a relatively accurate and detailed one, but since we're printing out of straight aluminum, tapping the threads after the fact will give a better and more certain to be functional result so I decided to go with that. After getting the whole model, as well as the slit that the PCB will slide into cut out, it was time to make the fingers that hold the PCB a little bit thinner. Since it's, once more, printed out of a very strong material, the thickness that I included with the original plastic mounts is just not needed here. Additionally, having these PCB gripping fingers thinner means that when the bolts or screws that are used to connect this to the PCB are tightened, the fingers can flex slightly and act like a clamp on the board. I went ahead and cleaned up the step between the thinner fingers and the wider base with a simple chamfer or two, and then I added these slits. The purpose of these slits is not just for aesthetics, though I totally think that they make the mounts look a lot cooler. No, these slots are here for the sake of trying to limit heat transfer. The mounts clearly end up getting a reasonable amount of heat transferred into them from the boards, as is evident by the melted mounts I was struggling with, and though these new aluminum mounts won't melt under this heat, they will do something else. They'll transfer it through them and into the stand. The specific stands that I have, and I think for that matter most stands, shouldn't have an issue with a little bit of heat, but trying to limit the amount of heat that can be transferred into the stands by reducing the amount of metal it can transfer through can't hurt. I'm not sure how well these slits worked in the end, but I think they were a good thought. As you can see, there's a very small surface area that the heat can actually transfer through now because of these slits, so theoretically, less heat should be able to be transferred into the stands and more of it should stay with the boards. I finished off my model with the PCB mounting holes, which I accidentally left as the spacing on the updated version of my light PCB that I made with my PWM dimmer video, so I did have to drill my light PCBs a little, but it wasn't an issue because there were no traces under the places I needed to drill. After that, a few chamfers made it a little nicer looking and should eliminate any sharp corners, and that's the model. I then sent the model off to PCBWay to have it manufactured, and a little more than a week later, I received a box with all five of the mounts in the mail. One of them is missing here because I've 
may have been a little too excited and opened the box up before the camera was rolling so that I could install one, but they were all accounted for in the shipment, as expected. I promise I'll install the other two mounts I need to install in just a second, but I do have a few more things that I want to mention with the Metal 3D Printing Service. An SLM, or Selective Laser Melting Machine, is used to form these metal parts. A thin layer of powder is spread out across the bed, and a laser is aimed to melt all of one layer of the parts in the batch. Once that layer has been melted, the bed moves down slightly and another layer of powder is deposited, melted, and the cycle repeats until the end product is all of the final parts encased in a block of unmelted powder. Something very important to keep in mind when using a technology such as this is that there is no infill. In more common FDM 3D printing, we have infill structures because they save a lot of our material while keeping our printed parts stronger than they would be if they were entirely hollow. With an SLM machine, due to the way that the powder is deposited, large hollow areas inside and infill structures are not commonly used. That's because they're hard to remove after the fact, and if an infill structure was used, in between all the infill structures would be unmelted powder, which would just be trapped there. So, instead, oftentimes all of that material is melted, which results in a solid metal part. I only need three metal mounts from my lights, but ordered five, so I do have some extras. I took one of the extras and cut it in half with my hacksaw, just to show you all that these parts are entirely solid, which is pretty neat and definitely something that needs to be considered when designing parts to 3D print on a metal 3D printer. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's get these mounts quickly installed. I started out by running the parts down to the garage and tapping some quarter inch 20 threads into them, which was super easy to do because aluminum is pretty easy to tap. I'll also quickly note that if you want metal parts that aren't aluminum, PCBWay offers this same SLM service with stainless steel, tool steel, and even titanium alongside their aluminum offer. Offering, of course. Here you can see the way that these new mounts compare to the old ones. I'll make sure to update my instructable that I made on these lights to include this model as an option for anyone looking at building this. Now, the holes on these mounts I ordered are designed to fit the slightly updated version of my light PCBs, which I don't have, so I'll just need to redrill some holes quickly. I'll also file down the back of the PCB a small amount because the burr that has been formed by the previous installation of screws is making the PCB too thick to fit into the new mount. The tolerances on these mounts were pretty tight, and I was able to make Make them so tight because I could find information on the 3D printing processes tolerances on PCBWay's website. Past the redrilling and sanding, I was able to simply screw the mounts in and I was done. I designed the mounts to be able to work with M2.5 bolts and nuts for a cleaner method of mounting them than using some random screws as self-tappers like I have. That's all I have for you today. Thank you to PCBWay once more for providing their aluminum 3D printing service and making this final facet of my lighting project possible. In any case, that's all that I have for you in this video. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.